Patient while I'm D2 with me is Monk, and we have a treat for you next. We have Eloise versus Surrender, our two invited players going against each other. Uh, we have Mage, Priest, for war and Warrior for Eloise, and we have Warlock, Warrior, and Priest for Surrender. What do you think about this matchup, Monk? Yeah, uh, quite an interesting lineup for both players. Um, I know Eloise, for instance, doesn't typically play Warrior. I haven't seen her really play Patron that much. Um, in the Archon Team League, for example, she is mostly known for playing decks like Mage, decks like uh, Warlock, either Handlock or Zoo. So it's, again, nice to see a lot of people uh, going out of their comfort zones, maybe. Yeah, that's definitely one of the coolest things about this tournament, as we see Eloise... Uh, her deck's on the screen right now. Let me just get that big for you. And it's going to be a Freeze Mage, it looks like. Uh, and for the Priest, it's going to be Dragon Priest. Finally, we have a Patron Warrior. So uh, more or less standard as far as what people are bringing um, in general. Don't see any uh, Reno Jackson, just, for, uh, just to make one note there. Uh, other than that, what do you think about these? Yeah, pretty standard. I just want to point out the Dragonkin Sorcerer. Typically not a card you see in many um, many Dragon Priests these days because it's kind of like a card that's been phased out. Um, you'd rather want something like New Age cards like uh, Brand Bronzebeard or maybe um, something more like the Tice decklist with more Zombie Chows. Um, better early game, basically. Yep, and uh, now we have Surrender's text on the screen for you guys. It's going to be a Zoo Lock and uh, a bit more late game than we saw previously. Next is going to be uh, Patron Warrior, and lastly, it's going to be uh, Dragon Priest as well. So yeah, pretty uh, mirror-y lineup here. The only difference being that the, it's going to be the Zulok versus that uh, uh, Freeze Mage. Everything else is uh, basically a mirror. Yeah, um, warm. It's really interesting that Surrender decided to bring a Zulok because he's the guy who really popularized, uh, as, as funny enough as it is to say this, but he kind of popularized Reno Warlock even in the Western scene because he was the guy who brought it to uh, Sea Story Cup. He showed everyone at Sea Story Cup the power of Reno Warlock, even though it was a very unrefined list at the time. It had cards like um, Flame Imp in it, which no one uses these days. It has cards like, uh, or it didn't run cards like Jaraxxus, which everyone uses these days. But he brought it to top five legend in, in Asia. He showed it to everyone at Sea Story Cup, and that's kind of one of the sources of where you find the deck where it kind of grew up. Um, but now it's going on to another matchup, Dragon Priest. What do you think about this matchup, D2? I mean, obviously, they're going to be trying to compete for the board a lot. Um, having minions on the board will be very important because of the buffs that you can have uh, with Valen's Chosen and uh, even just the Power Word Shield. Uh, you mentioned earlier that the Dragonkin Sorcerer isn't something that you see um, all the time, but it can be pretty useful, obviously, for you know allowing the dragon base effects to basically get procced. And also, if you can get it on the field, it's pretty dangerous. You kind of have to kill that thing right away before you know it gets some sort of uh, valence chosen on it, or even uh, just even just a power word shield turns it into a four eight, which, as we all know, it's really difficult to deal with as a priest. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you, D2. This is not one of my favorite matchups, mostly because um, the. The games are really decided way early on in the first two turns. Whoever gets board control just never lets go. And from just the opening hands, I think... Actually, both these uh, players have really good opening hands, but it's really going to be the Velen's Chosen that is going to kind of seal the deal, I feel. A 4-7 is really hard to deal with. But now that we talk about that, Eloise also gets a Velen's Chosen. So yeah, both players get pretty good hands here. Yeah, she's able to use hers first, too, so it ends up being a little bit better for her, even if she has a playoff curve with the uh, Wormless Agent the turn uh, following that. And, yeah, the biggest thing about the Valence Chosen is that you get more health than attack, obviously, so it's not like an advantage. It just makes it so much more difficult to be able to remove that minion, provided that, you know, the extra attack is enough to be able to get, an, uh, get a good trade. Yeah, the reason that um, whoever wins the early game usually wins the game is that Really, the the priest AOEs, the ways it has to get back on the board, are Light Bomb and Holy Nova, and neither of these cards are really good at killing off the pre the opposing priest board. Usually, pretty much every priest minion besides uh, the the five drops, the Azure Drakes and the Blackwing uh, Corruptors, have way more health than they have attack. So Light Bomb really isn't an option. Holy Nova does way too little damage against uh, that kind of board. The comeback card for Priest is really Sylvanas. 
Um, unfortunately, that's not really run in a lot of decks, and we don't really see it as much. Um, and in these decks in particular, Sylvanas is not run. So uh, again, it just reinforces the idea of whoever gets control of the game early on probably will take a runaway lead. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of times you see the Holy Nova just help with the subtle traits here and there. Um, but looks like, it, I mean, Surrender was agonizing over, for a long time over whether or not to hit the uh, Twilight Whelp, and looks like it kind of worked out for him. Now he's able to clear this with the uh, Valence Chosen. Otherwise, I believe he wouldn't have been able to. Yeah, it would have been one damage off. So, I mean, sometimes people make fun of his stance, right? You know, just kind of sitting there, not like this uh, pose. And uh, sometimes giving him a hard time, but you know it's for a reason. He was thinking for a long time what the repercussions were for that attack, and that attack alone could, you know, definitely change this game. I think honestly, if he didn't make that attack, the game would be over about now. Yeah, it was just uh, it, like again, like just like Eloise would run away with the game. But actually, this is one of the by far most even games of Dragon Priest, at least in the openings. Usually, it's one guy running away with the lead. But uh, there's actually a lot of decision making here. Um, like, you can play on curve here with uh, the Wormerst agent and a heal, or you can go for the greedy card draw. Yeah. Um, pro a lot of people make fun of Dragon Priest as a deck that kind of plays itself, much like Druid, because you just play on curve. But we can see Surrender's brilliant decision just on turn two, um, kind of put him back into this game, or kept him in this game rather. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely would have been a runaway for Eloise had that been the case. And uh, yeah, going again for you know a smart kind of tempo play rather than going for you know the card draw. The card draw might have just you know got himself tempoed out of the game uh, if he had gone for that potentially. So gonna go for this play instead. Realize that there's no Holy Nova coming up uh, for Eloise on this turn. So uh, gonna go ahead and attack once more. And uh, Eloise now stuck with a pretty. A tough decision here. I imagine she's going to go for the Wormage Agent and heal. Uh, though, are there any benefits to playing that Dark Cultist? Um, I don't really see too many. It's just the the problem there is that the the Dark Cultist it doesn't really have anything to buff. So on its own, it's quite a weak card. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Surrender, he... Wow, now that he's picked the Azure Drake, it kind of changes things a little bit. Uh, could use that Holy Nova and clear the board while keeping his alive uh, that would be an okay play he could also uh, draw a card and then clear one of the minions and then his other one uh, is a slight but that would leave his board kind of vulnerable to a holy nova so again a lot of tough decisions here for surrender looks like he's going to value the card draw now because his hand's getting a little bit uh, sparse right now and uh, can also play this twilight drake or twilight whelp excuse me afterward yeah, the main thing that well, Surrender is thinking about two things: how does he play around Holy Nova as um, as much as possible, and how does he play around the uh, Blackwing Corruptor as much as possible? Unfortunately, he can't really do both here. Yeah, um, but he does play some minions who can kind of deal with the Holy Nova, and uh, if that's you know Eloise's entire turn, I, I think he's okay with that. Uh, by yeah. the way, for those of you guys, if you haven't uh, realized from our commentating, Eloise is on the top slash left, obviously, and uh, Surrender is on the bottom. Uh, the, the funny thing here is that if Holy Nova goes off in this turn, then Surrender will draw a card. So he kind of plays around Holy Nova in that way, right. even though it feels really bad to... Uh, to lose a, a buffed up zombie chow, that's kind of like one of the ways you win the game by snowballing with that. Yeah, that's the annoying thing about not being able to kill your opponent's Northshire Cleric and wanting to uh, heal up, for instance. Eloise picks up that Valence Chosen and can clear this uh, Wormus Agent, but she wouldn't be able to heal up her minion without drawing a card for Surrender. Could still go for that play. Uh, you might value the tempo over uh, giving your opponent a card, but you know, obviously it's pretty painful to do that. Yeah, the problem with that is uh, also just the minions on board can kind of trade into it anyway. Right. The zombie Chow. Well, if she heals it, yeah. If she heals it now, it's one damage out of range. So this gets kind of annoying uh, for Surrender. He does have the Holy Nova, but that's a pretty high price. Uh, Valen's Chosen is a very big pickup right here. Um, I imagine he's going to use that as well as heal. I don't think he's going to go for the, um, the uh, Shrinkmeister. Right. Um, even though he's going to have to give up the zombie chow anyway, um, it's still all right because he's traded two villains chosen for two villains chosen. Now he knows that uh, Eloise won't have any more. Uh, plus, he gets board control. 
Plus, he has a huge minion on the board as well, the uh, buffed up uh, Twilight Whelp. And even in addition to that, he's well, going to draw so many cards. Off the North Shire Cleric, there's three cards drawn. Are you sure he's not going to use the Zombie Chow here? Uh, buff up the Zombie Chow? Yeah, it does get it out of range of dying, and then you... So it goes um, up to a 4-5, you hit, and you hit with the Twilight Whelp, and then you're left with the 4-3 uh, after the heal. Uh, I guess the Twilight Whelp... What would the Twilight Whelp be? It'd be the, the same spot, except the uh, right. Zombie Chow... The zombie child I, I really, couldn't could get shadow word death. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm I'm not a big fan of that. Just uh, get, be, leaving yourself vulnerable to shadow word death is really something you don't want to do, especially since you don't really have too many shadow word death targets in your deck anyway. Mm. It's really just the Doctor Boom and the two Blackwing Corruptors. Yeah, so kind just, of. A, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, and this way there's like not really a way to get rid of this Twilight Whelp very easily. A four or five that can be healed up is exactly what you don't want to deal with. Yeah, basically the only way to deal with it, other than something you know crazy that uh, we haven't thought of yet, is something like uh, Shrinkmeister Shadow Word Pain, which is you know not the greatest use of that Shrinkmeister, but uh, just totally crazy to think that you know uh, you rather have a four uh, attack minion rather than a six attack minion on the board uh, with the same exact health. Um, well, actually, I guess it would be. Oh, it has more health. Okay, so it would have been a six-three versus a four-five. So I guess that that's another consideration to uh, make it in this instance. So overall, good play by Surrender on Eloise's side. Um, everything's just kind of awkward, right? She can play the um, the Shadowward Pain is a thing to you know turn off the card draw. Uh, she can also play this Dark Cultist, but it dies for quote unquote free. Um, does require a heal in order to get out of Holy Nova range afterward, but still kind of painful. Right. It also kind of sets up for the 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 light bomb. So I can definitely see a world where um, yeah. So the obvious play there was to play the Azure Drake um, and save the Shrinkmeister and everything else. But this plays around light bomb, which is again one of the only ways that uh, Eloise can get back in the game. So um, besides. So basically, Surrender is just playing to Eloise's outs. She just doesn't want Eloise to come back in this game whatsoever, and he's doing a really good job locking her out. Yeah, absolutely. It's just an uh, just amazing play by Surrender. I'm really impressed every single time uh, he's out here just playing around every single possible thing, thinking about all the options, and uh, even on top of you know what you just mentioned, the fact that he gets a bigger board and a more annoying board with that... Uh, that uh, Dark Cultist, which is able you know, to buff your other minions, just so hard for Eloise to deal with. It's not really easy to Shadow Menace either, if that's in, indeed even in Eloise's deck. Um, obviously the Light Bomb being much more prevalent. But uh, Surrender with another kind of interesting choice. Um, obviously he's in the lead, he has kind of uh, his pick of what he wants to do. He can get a pretty decent trade here, or he can use the Death. Uh, it just kind of comes down to whether or not he feels like this death will be useful later, or if this is the best he's going to get it. And he picks up the second death, so I feel like he's just going to use it now. Yeah, you you have to use the first one. Using the second one would be a misplay since you already hovered over the first one, and it would reveal to your opponent what you actually have. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, surrender. The only two ways he can lose right now is if he can't deal with the Yasera and it just gets out of control, or if a Sylvanas comes on the field. Um, that being said, even if if Sarah comes on the field, it, it just feels like Surrender might be able to smork Eloise down. Right. Uh, so, for Surrender's sake, do you think um, he goes for the Sarah this turn? Or, I mean, he could be afraid of the Cabal uh, plus the Shrinkmeister. But, uh, wait, has he seen the Cabal? I think he... He hasn't seen a Cabal yet, but he's seen... I mean, not, seen, I mean, not Cabal, uh, Shrink... Shrinkmeister, yeah. Sorry. He's seen a Shrinkmeister. And typically right. you don't want to play more than one Shrinkmeister in a Dragon deck because you just don't have the spaces for it in the deck, so um, that would be interesting. So it looks like he's going to go instead for the 4 mana, or excuse me, the 4 attack uh, Holy Nova, just to clear that off nice and easy. Has a board which is really hard to kill uh, with Light Bomb and uh, is basically threatening lethal, so uh, in the end, probably uh, a better play here. Not, not risky at all and putting a lot of pressure on. Oh, definitely, I think so. Um... Basically, Surrender's just saying, I'm just n not going to lose. There's no way you can beat me with this play. Whereas the Acera overall would have been a stronger play, but it would have given his opponent an out. So just a really strong play overall from Surrender this entire game. Really impressed, even though it is like a, more of a mindless Dragon Priest deck. You can really see his decision back on turn two. Um, really heads up play there. It kind of like kept him in the game, and it's what kind of snowballed him in the game. Um, it's one of those... like. Uh, classic cases of Dragon Priest where 
uh, Surrender got an early lead, and he kind of snowed ball this lead. So Eloise was trying to hang on for a while, and even though it was like a really valiant battle, it took a while for Surrender to win. He did so very slowly and very consistently. Yeah, it's kind of akin to that famous video where uh, Life Coach spent his entire turn, you know, roping against Trump when he had nothing to do. Uh, but event he was just thinking about future plays. Kind of the same thing with Surrender. Obviously, he had something to do that turn. But uh, he was thinking of all the implications down the road of that particular attack and ended up working out very well for him, obviously. He took the game yeah. in the end. And uh, now I, we have... I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I remember that game you're talking about. He basically roped Trump on turn one, and but he eventually killed Trump on turn five because he planned out all his turns from just basically turn one. Yeah, definitely. So uh, the Korean life coach <laughs> is... Uh, is doing his best impression, getting those results out. Hopefully he can uh, get out of this group just like Life Coach did yesterday. Now we have a very interesting matchup. We have the Dragon Priest versus the Patron Warrior. When pre-nerf Patron Warrior, this was actually a good matchup for the Dragon Priest. Uh, now the Warrior has more options kind of to uh, just fight for the board with those Shredders and those other minions. So uh, what do you think about this matchup nowadays? Um, I think it's even better for the Dragon Priest. There's a lot of matchups where... Um, the Patron Warrior actually improved by getting nerfed. Like, for example, Druid. I think the Druid matchup really improved for Patron Warrior after Patron Warrior was nerfed because Warsong Commander wasn't really a good card in the Druid matchup. You just want minions, you want to develop a Patron board. Um, and Warsong Commander didn't really help with that. Dr. Boom helps with that, kind of. Grom helps with that, but Warsong Commander didn't. For the Dragon Priest, though, I think Warsong Commander can be a pretty good option because you, it does uh, allow for OTK options, which is something definitely um, you want to do against Dragon Priest. Also, because Warsong Commander was nerfed, there you don't have to put as defensive cards in the Dragon Priest anymore. For example, Chilma, no one re really uses that anymore um, too much because um, you don't really need to. You don't need to be defensive against Patron Warrior anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, or on... For this game, uh, Eloise, she doesn't know whether this is Patron or Control Warrior yet, and if it is Control Warrior, it's a really horrible matchup for her. So you see her putting on the pressure as quickly as possible. Um, a lot of times when you're playing against Control Warrior, you really just need to kill them as fast as possible before the Brawl comes out, and that's what she's doing. She just gets the uh, Shrinkmeister on board, then followed by the Twilight uh, Guardian. She's going to find out soon that it's not in, it is indeed not the uh, Control Warrior, and might be pretty happy about it. But uh, in the meantime, she's trying to kill her opponent as quickly as possible. Right. She also, because she only is running one Light Bomb, she doesn't have the option to kind of grind out the Control Warrior. That's not really something that she can do if this is indeed Control Warrior. She's going to be pretty happy to see this Inner Rage and just an armor up. No Death Spite here means that um, Eloise can indeed put on the pressure. And just an Inner Rage here means that it is Patron Warrior. So... Um, very good opening hand for Eloise, putting on the pressure, making sure that patrons won't be able to do anything. And uh, essentially, she's also setting up so that even if patrons spawn on the board, it's like not really good. Um, basically, all these minions can deal with the patrons so easily. In fact, just the four minions on board can deal with a typical patron flood because there's two, three health minions, one, two health minion, and one, one health minion. Yeah, not to mention the fact that Surrender can't even do that this turn because there's no Despite equipped. Um, so a few options here for Surrender. Not, nothing really to do. Uh, by the way, we do see that this is the Pyromancer version of the uh, Patron Warrior. Also has the double uh, Dread Corsairs in there as well. Um, what do you think about that last turn by Eloise uh, playing the Dark Cultist and the uh, Twilight Whelp rather than going for the uh, second Twilight Guardian? Yeah, like you said, she just wants to put more pressure on the board. Uh, as much damage as possible, and maybe um, by playing just this additional minion that has two health, she increases the clock of Surrender by one turn, so uh, putting on more pressure on Surrender. Wow, and even more damage coming into the hand of Eloise. Has to most likely kill both of these minions that can be pretty uh, dangerous if you let them live, uh, both of them, so... Um... The trades aren't the greatest. Uh, the Valence Chosen helps out quite a bit, though, and she does get to heal afterwards to draw a card. So, in the end, working out decently well for her. And uh, let's see how she goes for the trades. Yeah, that's probably best. You want, I mean, you kind of want your Dark Cultist to die anyway, uh, so it's fine to leave it low. I think I might have uh, healed the Twilight Whelp to prevent it from getting executed here. Yeah, I, I thought so as well. I thought that was a bit strange, but um, I guess that plays around some kind of whirlwind effect. It also. You actually 
Sorry. You, you don't mind get it, getting it whirlwinded, though, I think. Yeah, I think what she's... Maybe she's baiting out the execute, saying, that, like, okay, you execute this, I don't care, I have bigger things later. Gonna be a concede right away for Sren, realizing he has no chance to win this game. And that's gonna tie it up one game to one. Eloise comes back with the Dragon Priest with a win. Right, so now it's going to be... Um, Eloise still has the Freeze Mage left, and that's going to be a pretty interesting matchup. Um, a Freeze Mage or or her own Patron Warrior, basically, against Surrender's Patron Warrior. I think that's going to be a pretty interesting matchup there, no matter what Eloise picks. Yeah, definitely. What do you think they will pick here, though? Uh, so for Eloise... Eloise Obviously, the warrior versus warrior is a coin toss uh, or a 50-50 matchup, uh, depends on obviously the player's skills as well. Uh, okay, well, I guess we're getting into this game. No time to talk about that. It is going to be that warrior mirror, and uh, this is basically exactly like it used to be. It's basically whoever gets the patrons out first has a massive advantage. Um, I think it's even like more of an advantage than it used to be because previously, when you were playing patron warrior, the patron warrior mirror, you're kind of afraid of your opponent killing you off with Warsong Commander. Like, if you develop a board of patrons, they can kind of just Warsong Commander you out of the game. Warsong Commander, Whirlwind, um, and uh, Frothing Berserkers. But now that Warsong isn't a thing, your patrons are basically free to do whatever they want. Uh, not only that, but it's harder for your opponent to clear off patrons because there's no Warsong Commander. We I've seen games where... Um, you basically have to use a Warsong Commander, an Armor Smith, and an Inner Rage to clear off the last 3-3 patron. But that's not an option right now. Yeah, definitely. And back in the day, the scariest thing you could see after you make a board of patrons was Thorison. You're like, oh no, <laughs> I'm yeah. just going to die now, aren't I? But uh, yeah, these days that's not an option, obviously. So going to have to get rid of your uh, opponent's patrons the hard way, if at all. You might just die before that happens. In the case, I, I guess uh, we're going to be on patron watch right now to see who can get those patrons oh. first. That's, yeah, that's a pretty big draw. That's a huge that, draw, right? With the that... death bite. Yeah, I missed the death bite. Sorry, go ahead. That is honestly just game winning right now. Um, I'm not really sure what Ellis can do at all with this hand from Surrender. Um, Surrender just knew how to mulligan for this matchup. You want Death Spite, you want um, page, uh, the Grim Patron, and if you have uh, both of those, then the Inner Rage is just so amazing here. Um, not only that, but Surrender has the coin, so no matter what Eloise draws, sh she will not be able to get a board of patrons before Surrender does. Yeah, looking really bad for Elvis right now. Uh, Surrender able to get, uh, potentially able to get uh, the patrons out next turn, and Elvis really nothing to do about it. Um, I mean, there's nothing preventative either. It's not like she can just drop a patron; and it just dies. Uh, Surrender even has the Dread Course here to get in the way of any weapon attacks. So yeah, this is looking really bad for Elvis and really good for Surrender. Right, so typically, like, Patron Warrior has a hard time dealing with the board of patrons because you can slam the two health one, you can execute the one health one, for instance, or enrage it, and then you can fire your uh, one of the three health ones. But that last three health one is just so difficult to deal with. Really no options for a Patron Warrior to deal with. And uh, it's even harder, like you said, because this a Dread Corsair will block it out. Yep, so it looks like, uh, I imagine Surrender's probably just going to go with the uh, Dread Corsair as well. Yep, going to plop it out. Really easy turn, just gets a huge board. Uh, Eloise is going to look at that. Obviously, the animations take a couple seconds. We will see her reaction. And uh, probably hiding some sadness on the inside after seeing yeah. what just happened. Um, yeah, but, basically but Actually, this, this Dread Corsair is pretty relevant now because it prevents the, the Fairy Dragon from running into one of the 3-3s. Three so if Eloise had like the perfect hand right now, it'd be Fiery War Axe, uh, Slam, and then Double Executes, I guess, and that would deal, deal with the board. Um, but that Dread Corsair is, is necessitating like a second Execute in order to clear it off, basically. Yeah, and um, what has Eloise played so far? Can she, can she maybe disguise the fact that she's a Patron Warrior and just concede um, right now? I think because she's played the piloted shredder, it's that gonna be hard to do that. Could be in control warrior, maybe like a mid range, like a you put that in as an extra tech so you don't die to aggro. Uh, looks like she's gonna go for make the opponent's board uh, as big as possible so that uh, the patrons overspawn. Um, it could be reasonable, although her, yeah. So that wasn't a that wasn't a mistake not attacking with her um, fairy dragon first. She wanted the board as big as possible. 
however, this is going to spawn two fresh 3 3s for her opponent. And then, yeah, it looks like she didn't do uh, the math correctly on that. Not, not like she had any other options anyway. And uh, Surrender with basically the perfect draw in that matchup is going to take it two games to one. Kind of uh, just sad to see that, even though Surrender is obviously a really good player. It's just sad to see a game just be an auto win. Right, and uh, it's going to be up to Surrender's weakest deck to to take the final game. Again, we're, we're seeing one player going uh, very strong with his first two decks, but that last deck typically tends to be his weakest deck against, uh, against his opponent's lineup, his Zoo. Is not going to do too favorably against Patron Warrior or Freeze Mage, but at least he gets two chances. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they're unfavored matchups, but they're not unwinnable matchups, a la you know Control Warrior versus Freeze Mage or something along those lines. Um, Surrender will have a decent shot at winning both matchups, particularly because he runs them again. It's which can be uh, pretty annoying in the Freeze Mage matchup. Obviously, has um, those. Uh, big minions, which can be annoying for the Patron Warrior as well if they do not draw the Execute. Uh, do you know if he has uh, Lothab, by the way? Just uh, looking ahead a bit. Uh, Surrender does have Lothab in... Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, he does have Lothab in the Zoo deck. Alright, so that would be pretty useful. Uh, I mean, it'll be useful in this matchup as well, but it will be a key card in the Freeze Mage if it does go to that game. We have a double Fire War Axe in the hand of Eloise, so that's going to be helping immensely as far as, uh, you know, holding off the onslaughts of the Zoo deck here. Um, kind of an okay hand here for Surrender, has the 1-2-3, uh, can uh, make some stuff happen potentially with that. Uh, especially because it's not the greatest, you know, Fire War Axe targets either. So, looking okay for Surrender, looking... Probably pretty decent for uh, Eloise as well with the pickup of that uh, that uh, Frothing Berserker. Yeah, um, I want to point out that Surrender was kind of hovering over the Void Terror when he was mulliganing, and that's kind of a strange uh, thing to think about because usually you don't want a three drop, especially a situational three drop uh, in your opening hand. But Void Terror is actually one of the ways you win uh, this particular matchup if they don't have the uh, exactly the execute. You don't really keep executes in your own opening hand, and if you can get a Void Terror with a power of leveling out early on, you kind of just win the game, especially with that egg. So, especially back when Warsong Commander was a thing, Void Terror was very often the win condition of Zoo against Patron Warrior. Um, uh, just a really easy free win. But these days, because the um, Patron Warrior has more options um, early on to deal with the the Void Terror, and also the fact that the, there's not Warsaw Commander anymore, so Zoo can actually play more of a late game. It's completely viable not to keep the Void Terror or your opening, in your opening hand, especially if you don't have anything else. Yeah, so that's obviously an option for him, but deemed it a little bit too risky. Just definitely want to get that early start uh, instead of uh, putting it all in on potential uh, Void Terror play, because you do need the other cards to be able to make that work. Um, Swender didn't go for Power Overwhelming Coin Imking Boss there. Um, he obviously had the Void Caller to back it up the following turn. Nothing to uh, you know draw into, but Eloise doesn't know that could have been a bluff. But what do you think about that play? Really interesting to me. Yeah, I agree. I think um, possibly maybe he's going for a play that just really prioritizes getting a Void Terror out along with the Egg and Power Overwhelming. Um, but the problem with this play is. Yeah, Battle Rage is activated, and now the board isn't really that strong. Plus, the power doesn't get full. Oh, look at that, a second power. Plus, the power doesn't get um, full value here. You might as well just kill the Armorsmith, and that feels really bad. Um, yeah, if you kill the Armorsmith, you're almost certainly killing the uh, the Frothing Berserker with your Inking boss, which leaves behind a 1-1. One, one. So that would be a 4-4 four, four and a 1-1 one, one versus nothing, versus uh, having the... Um, Having the Nerubian, the 4-4, four, four, and your full in-game boss versus uh, an armor smith. Uh, what do you think is the more optimal uh, board there? Um, uh, compared to what? What boards? So 4-4, four, 2-4 four, four versus 1-4, or 4-4, uh, 1-1 four, four, one, one versus nothing. Uh, that's a really hard decision here. Um... I'm not really sure. The Armorsmith, you've already seen a Battle Rage here, so I guess a damage Armorsmith isn't really that amazing here. Oh, he's going to go for a 4-4 four, four and a 1-1. One, one. Nope, 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 just kidding. <laughs> um, he could actually... Yeah, he's going to do this, uh, which... Um, 
Yeah, he's gonna get the extra 1-1, one, one, um, so that the M King boss can maybe finish it off later. I'm a bit surprised that he actually tapped there. Um, obviously it's nice to have extra cards in hand, but at the same time, having the, the extra egg on the board with the Power of Whelming would have been very beneficial for him to take anything in the future. Though we do see that Eloise doesn't have anything to play anyway. But, um... Yeah, it looks like Surrender's probably just gonna go for the egg this turn, uh, since he's reaching for the tap already. No reason to in implosion in this situation. Uh, could also go for an Argus, uh, to make, what would that be, a 3-3 three, three and a 2-2? Two, two, which is also pretty annoying, actually, for Le Eloise to deal with. Yeah, uh, but, you know, the Death Spite is still up. Um, I think Surrender, he's going through all his options and thinking about if my opponent has the optimal hand, what can I do against it? If he has Grim Patron and Inner Rage, for example. And I think the answer is really not too much. Um, you do have the Implosion, you do have the um, the Power Relving to deal with two Patrons, but other than that, you're going to be in quite a bit of trouble. So he's just playing like the best that he can and hopes to God that he doesn't. his opponent doesn't really have the God Hand. Yeah, I mean, it would pretty be pretty difficult to deal with that anyway, so just trying to get the most annoying uh, board as possible for Eloise to deal with. And uh, in the meantime, he has some things to follow up if Eloise doesn't have that amazing hand. Uh, Eloise doesn't want to use her Death Spite right now, nothing to do with it anyway, or nothing really to kill that's important anyway, so just going to leave that there. Going to play the Armor Smith, has the Doctor Boom for the following turn. Surrender now uh, with a few options here. Can pop this egg if he so chooses. Um, can also go for the Knife Juggler and Implosion. Also has a Defender of Argus, so uh, kind of the world is a bit of his oyster right here to be able to uh, take out this Armor Smith and continue to develop the board. Yeah, um, yeah. This is a, just the most annoying board possible. Uh, I want to point out really great restraint from Eloise the last turn, uh, not using that death spite and uh, just going for the slam instead. And now this is a board that actually death spite will be more useful against. Uh, a bit unfortunate though. Surrender's doing a good job on the other hand of setting up a board that um, necessitates Eloise to deal with this knife juggler, so he, she can't play the Doctor Boom on turn as efficiently. Oh, again, pretty good restraint, not using the Death Spite. Yeah, had she used it there, it would have gotten rid of a 2-1 and a 1-1. One, one. So she... And it would have gotten rid of the egg as well, which is a 1-2, which is kind of a thing. So the board would have been the exact same size. Uh, she could have maybe gotten rid of her own boom bots and started getting some of the, uh, the damage on the opponent, but wants to save them uh, to be able to get some good trades here, potentially. I mean... For all the work that Surrender's done making his board as annoying as possible, I mean, just the Doctor Room by itself is pretty annoying from Eloise, so uh, Surrender's going to have a hard time dealing with this. Um, might even play his own Doctor Boom, however. Yeah, why not? Uh, there's not really... Oh, okay. Oh, this is... Did everything just die? Yeah, everything died, including the Rubian. Um... That's actually not that great for uh, Surrender. He really wants that Nerubian to survive, to tank that Death Spite. Yep. And now um, this board is going to be pretty vulnerable to the Death Spite. Everything's going to die, um, except um, like with the inclusion. Oh, especially with Whirlwind. Now everything can truly die. Um, but I was going to say with the Unstable Ghoul, this board would have been in, uh, quite a consistent threat. A lot of options yet again for Eloise. Yeah, I mean, she had the opportunity to play the Unstable Ghoul regardless of whether she got that Whirlwind. Um, I imagine she might hold on to the Whirlwind for future turns, especially because, I mean, it could be pretty useful. All she's really killing is a Knife Juggler at the moment. Um, you could just play the Grom and go face. You could play the Grom after the Whirlwind goes off and kill, like, the Knife Juggler. A lot of options for her here, but... Uh, yeah, what do you think about just going face here and, and kind of putting the pressure on your opponent and uh, preventing him from uh, being able to tap very much in the future? Yeah, um, I guess the problem I have with going face is because there's no Warsong Commander in your deck, you don't really threaten too much. Like, you put your opponent at 11 health, but, um, like, there's not really any charge minions you can use. The only options are to... Um, basically put on consistent weapon damage. Yeah, so Surrender, I mean, it's kind of been a back and forth. Eloise seems to have been in a pretty good 
uh, spot for the majority of the game uh, had the Dr. Boom and the Grom to kind of curve into, but outside of, the, outside of those two cards, she hasn't had anything going for her, and you can see that, you know, in her hand right now, uh, really has nothing to do, and, you know, no Grim Patrons at, in her hand at the moment, so no real way to fight back and, against the Onslaught that Surrender's, you know, providing against her. Uh, she does have a way to kill this Dr. Boom, but it's kind of expensive. You really, I mean, apart from the Execute, which you don't mind, obviously, using on the Dr. Boom at all, you really want to save this Whirlwind, uh, not only for your opponent's board, but for your board as well to uh, kind of continue to, or to be able to make those patrons. Right, and we're kind of seeing the problem with Patron Warrior against Zoo in modern times. It's that the Patron Warrior doesn't have, like, a consistent... Uh, end game win condition with Warsong Commander and Grim Patron. And now Surrender can actually do a decent job of just going into the late game. If Eloise runs out of cards, um, a Surrender could just take it just by on the aspect of, oh, he has a better hero power, and Eloise just can't draw anything from here on out. Yeah, absolutely. And I really like this play by Surrender, putting this Melganis out. Um, he realizes that you know, his her his opponent probably doesn't have an execute, and on top of that, he's basically making this unstable ghoul pretty worthless. Obviously, it's going to get some good value now, uh, now that she has basically the perfect way to use it, other than you know, Grim Pages being able to draw several cards here. But uh, yeah, Surrender was thinking that if he plays his other minions, his smaller minions, that that unstable ghoul gets value, and uh, no reason to just play something like a Lothab only, uh, for instance. So plays out the Mulganis, makes it makes it so the the unstable ghoul only gets the two damage in, doesn't really do too much else, and then from there he can make his other units count. I just want to point out that Acolyte was such a huge draw here. With it, he... Uh, she, oh, wow. wow. Especially with uh, the Execute top deck. And now it's really back in Eloise's corner. That Acolyte basically drew her three cards this turn with an activation from Battle Rage as well as two activations for the Acolyte itself and even a fourth card later. And in addition to that, it's going to be a huge body as well or a decently sized body that can contest a lot of minions as long as the Knife Juggles agree with her. Yeah, so even though it draws Eloise a card, that the Night Dragon was actually pretty huge because of the ability of the uh, Acolyte to, to trade in. Um, and now we really have a back and forth game. Eloise has some reasonable sized minions, but so does Surrender. Uh, talking about both in the hand and on the board. And uh, even if Eloise draws something like uh, Grim Patron, she can't really activate them anyway. So basically just a slugfest at the moment. Right, I'm kind of curious to see like how many cards both players have at the moment. Um, it probably won't go into fatigue, but I just want to kind of know like the card advantage both players have. Like how much of their deck have they used? Is the Patron Warrior more efficient or is the Zoo more efficient? Um, but again, it's kind of like it's kind of like Eloise. Uh, unfortunately for her, she hasn't drawn into the key card in this matchup, which is the Grim Patron. Um, that's kind of a renewable resource that she has to use. Whereas just overall, I don't think the Patron Warrior. But uh, excluding the Grim Patient, it's not as efficient with minion trades. Yeah, definitely. The Grim Patient is what basically draw, um, drives the deck. That's why it's called the Grim Patient in the first place. Um, looks like she's going to go for as big a board as possible. Not going to be drawing those cards. By the way, the, this new version of Grim Patient, if you guys aren't aware, is one that is more focused on tempo rather than card drawing. Obviously, drawing cards is really important to get those combos off, but uh, it's not going to be fatiguing quite as fast as the old one would because not every single card in the deck is, uh, you know, that um, the... Uh, card draw like the Norwich Inventor, stuff like that. Looks like Surrender is just going to start clearing off this board a bit. Um, can kill this Lothab as well with the uh, Hunter Keeper, which is a pretty good trade. And yeah, I mean, even though Eloise was able to kind of stabilize a bit, Surrender with this the never-ending card draw that he can get with his hero power and the just the strength of this deck, even after Malganus, Dr. Boom, and two Power Overwhelmings, he still managed to be able to take control of the board. Yeah, I believe... Uh, Surrender has already seen two whirlwind effects as well, or rather two whirlwinds and an unstable ghoul. <coughs> All right, <laughs> looks like yeah. Monk. Sorry, don't worry about that. Um, yeah, and after that, there's not really anything else. Um, she only runs one unstable ghoul, and she's already seen a death spite. So this board, even though it looks vulnerable to patron warrior, it's actually quite hardy. 
Yeah, absolutely. He, uh, he has some pretty good trades here. Eloise uh, is kind of wondering what to do here, what to trade into. Um, what do you think about just hitting the Lothop with your face and then going Pilot Shredder to your opponent's face to kind of cut off his card draw a bit here? Yeah, I like it in this uh, scenario. You're basically forcing your opponent to make the trades here. Uh, as we see in there, though, Surrender does have two Doom Guards left. We haven't seen one yet. Uh, he does have six damage on the board, and that would not be lethal right. since Eloise did trade there. So she did, in fact, have to trade. Uh, my mistake there, <laughs> uh, because of the looming threat of that Doom Guard. And uh, let's see, Surrender has a choice here. He can start trading. Um, he could just get rid of this, you know, implosion and just uh, get a lot of damage in. Um, you could go everything face, you could start trading with the uh, um, Frothing Berserker and then put the 1-1 one, one into the 4-1 just to make it really hard to kill. Uh, you could also throw away your 1-1 one, one so that your opponent doesn't get extra draws with the Acolyte. Um, it's really kind of tough here. It looks like he's just gonna not going to worry about it, just going to go face with everything. And um, I think with um, if you don't if you don't clear off the um, if you don't kill off your own one one, you might like you're most likely going to clear off this acolyte with your five seven. Yeah, I mean he's not afraid of execute obviously because he's seen two, but you know losing that five damage to face is pretty painful. That's why he's looking at his deck. He's thinking what cards can I pick up here? Uh, he has a second doom guard. Doesn't have any more power whelmings. Has used both abuse of sergeants. So maybe he uh, considering the armor up of the uh, patron warrior, he's going to be looking at several turns of having to hit the face. So uh, looks like that he went for the play, which is a bit more stable. Yeah, and uh, two of the best draws Eloise could have gotten here. The funny thing here is that Grim Patron, which there are two of left in Eloise's deck, actually wouldn't be that great because there are there's like really nothing left for Eloise to, uh, to combo with. That is a pretty big draw. Not going to be lethal quite yet, but uh, obviously really annoying. Combined with that uh, Void Walker, it's going to be really annoying uh, for Eloise to even deal with these two, and it could be lethal over two turns. Uh, right now, Surrender just wondering which one is better to attack with. Uh, if he attacks with the 5-6, it's vulnerable to the uh, Pilot Shredder if she has a weapon, though uh, he might have already determined that she doesn't have any weapons. We saw two Fire War in the opening hand, and we also seen a Death Bite. Have you seen the second Death Bite? No, the second Death Bite is still active. Okay. In a rage, oh, one of the worst draws that she can have. Right. Even, even a lowly 3-3 Grim Patron would have been better. Um, but I think that's just going to be it here. Yeah, she cannot come out of this. Um, looks like she's going to go for getting a taunt here uh, out of her pilot of Shredder. Uh, pretty heads up play. Doesn't get it, and Surrender is going to take this series, uh, taking an unfavored matchup in the end there. Now he, uh, with that 3 1, he is back into this group. Uh, obviously, he lost the first one, two games to three. Very important 3 1 there. If he had lost, he might have been on his way out the door. As for yeah, Eloise, just, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, pretty strong play from Surrender once again. Um, he kind of showed off how Zoo can now go toe to toe with Patron Warrior because there's no Warsong uh, Grim Patron combo. Um, well, in Eloise case, basically. In that case, there was yeah. no Patron either. So. Exactly. It, well, it, even before, you had the option of uh, your opponent never drawing into Warsong Commander or never drawing into uh, Grim Patron. But another thing to consider is um, now that there's no Warsong Commander, there's less cycle in this deck. Like, there's no shield blocks. Usually there are two ofs. And there's only one slam typically in this deck. So more of a tempo deck. So less of a chance to draw into that Grim Patron. And that could be one of the reasons Eloise couldn't get into the game with that Grim Patron. Yeah, pretty sad sight to see Grim Patrons not being able to patron. No one's getting in here, unfortunately, that game. Even the game when she lost the mirror uh, didn't wasn't able to get those patrons out. So pretty sad match for Eloise. Hopefully she can bounce back. Both of the players you just saw are 1-1, one and one, so they still both have a chance to get out of this group. Next, we'll be seeing Fu Oliver versus Jay Shot in the China versus China match. Uh, don't go anywhere. You will want to see that.